Hi, and welcome to Lesson 2.7. So today we're going to learn about how to prove different types of angle pair relationships. Today's going to be a lot of theorems and postulates. We'll go through a couple examples of proofs, though, at the end of the lesson. Okay, so some theorems. First, we already know that right angles are congruent to each other, but there's actually a theorem about it. So the theorem states that all right angles are congruent. So theorem 2.3 we now can use in stating that all right angles are congruent to each other. Our next one is our congruent supplement theorem. And this one's a little bit um, different, but let's read it through. So we've got if two angles are supplementary to the same angle, then they are congruent. Okay, so let's actually put this into an example. So for example, we've got angle one right here. And let's say angle two is right here. So they're on a straight line. Angle one and angle two are supplementary to each other. Let's say we have a third angle, angle three down here. If we are told that angle three and angle two are also supplementary, like it says right here, then we know from our theorem that angle one is congruent to angle three. That's what our theorem tells us, is that they will be congruent to each other. And we don't have to do any math to show it. So our theorem says if angle one and angle three are both supplementary to angle two, then angle one is congruent to angle three. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. So we also have the congruent complements theorem, which is the same thing. So instead of being supplementary, if two angles are complementary to the same angle, meaning that if two angles are complements to a third angle, then they are congruent to each other. Okay, so let's quickly draw that out as well. So let's say we have angle four right here. Let's say we have an angle five right here. So angle four and angle five are complementary to each other. They add up to 90 degrees. If angle six, let's say angle six is facing this way, if angle six is complementary to angle five, if angle six is the complement to angle five, then angle four and angle six are congruent to each other. So that's your congruent complements theorem. Okay, let's actually use these theorems. So for example, we want to find all the pairs of congruent angles given the following pieces of information. So we are told angle ABC, so this angle right here, is supplementary to angle CBD. And we see that angle CBD is supplementary to angle DEF. So angle ABC right here is supplementary to CBD. So we have angle, basically angle ABC. So the measure of angle ABC plus the measure of angle CBD equals 180 degrees. That's the definition of supplementary. And the measure of angle CBD plus the measure of angle DEF also equals 180 degrees. So we can see then that ABC and DEF are supplementary to the same angle. So we don't actually have to solve this out because we have a theorem now. We can just jump to the conclusion and say angle ABD, ABC, sorry, ABC is congruent to angle DEF from our congruence supplement theorem. We know that those two angles are congruent to each other because they are supplementary to the same angle. So that's how you use this theorem. Okay, moving on. So we got a couple more theorems and postulates. So linear pair postulate. If two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. And that makes sense, right? We know that if two angles form a linear pair, their measures equal 180. So for example, if we had two angles like this, one and two, so angle one and angle two, they form a linear pair. They form this straight line. So angle one, that means the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals 180 degrees. We also have a theorem. So remember, postulates we don't prove, theorems we can. Vertical angles theorem. Congruence theorem. So this is saying all vertical angles are congruent to each other, vertical angle pairs. So we've got two intersecting lines here. So angle one is going to be congruent to angle two. 
That's what this theorem says. And angle 3 is going to be congruent to angle 4. And remember, congruence means that they have the same measure. So 3 and 4 are vertical angles. 1 and 2 are vertical angles. And from our linear pair postulate, we know angle 1 plus angle 4 is 180 degrees, or angle 1 and angle 4 are supplementary. So angle 1 and angle 4 would be your linear pair postulate. Angle 1 and angle 2 is your vertical angles congruence theorem. Okay, moving on. Let's actually use these theorems again. Okay, so we want to find the values of x and y. A couple different ways that you can set this up. So we know that 4x plus 7y minus 12 is going to equal 180. They form a linear pair. But we have one equation, two variables. That's not so great. Let's see if we can simplify it. We also know vertical angles are congruent to each other. So we see here we've got a pair of vertical angles with the same variable. So we're going to set these two equal to each other. We know that 7y minus 12 has to be equal to 6y plus 8 because our vertical angles congruence theorem says that our vertical angles are congruent to each other. So let's solve it. 7y minus 12 equals 6y plus 8. Okay, so we're going to solve. We've got y equals 20. When we subtract 6y from both sides and add 12 to both sides. So we've got y. Now we're going to solve for x. Two different ways we can go about it. We can set these two angles right here equal to each other because those are your vertical angles. Or since we have our value for y, we can set 4x plus 7y minus 12 equal to 180 because we know that they are a linear pair and they're supplementary. So let's go that route. We're going to do a little bit different. So we have 4x plus 7 times 20 because we now know what our y is minus 12 equals 180. Okay, so we have 4x plus 140 minus 12 equals 180. So we get 4x plus 128 equals 180. So now we've got 4x equals 52. So x equals, when we divide by 4, 13. So again, you could have set 4x equal to 6x minus 26 as well and solved. Either one would have worked. Okay, one more example here. We are going to prove, given that line P is perpendicular to line M and line P is also perpendicular to line N, we want to prove that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Okay, so now we're going through our first proof here of the lesson, first and only. So remember, two column proof. So we start out with our statements. and our reasons. Okay, so number one. We've got P is perpendicular to M and P is perpendicular to N. This is our given. Remember, you always start out with a given. Okay, so now we can say angle one and angle two are right angles. The reason why we can say this is that in chapter one, we were given the definition of perpendicular lines. And the definition of perpendicular lines is that they intersect to form right angles. So our reason for this is definition of perpendicular lines. Okay, so we had a theorem earlier, our right angles congruence theorem, that says angle one is congruent to angle two. Remember that theorem said that right angles are congruent to each other. We're done. That's all we have to do. We're able to use that theorem in this proof. So the reason why we can state angle one is congruent to angle two is our right angle congruence theorem. And we've done it. We've proved that angle one is congruent to angle two. That's all we had to do. All right, that is it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the flip lesson. Look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.